The Kazava Tigers will head home with their tails between their legs. What a disappointing night for Wakefield. They are in a huge hole at the moment. The defence was so poor. They've got to come up with points. All good teams are built on defence. Not many points coming out of West Yorkshire this evening. That poor defence from Wakefield Trinity. They look a little bit nervous, to be honest. Well, it's been a sorry season start so far for both Casper and Wakefield, but they have poured down Weldon Road in their thousands tonight to bring life to this antiquated yet atmospheric rugby league ground in Casper. The trip home for both sets of supporters will be short, most likely sweet for just one. Well, the 2023 edition of Super League's rival round is upon us. The Tigers and Trinity will kick it all off tonight in West Yorkshire as they meet in a match that may have a huge bearing on the race to avoid relegation. Well, two changes to the Tiger side that lost narrowly in France. Niall Evels returns after missing the last four through injury. He will go straight into the fullback role, pushing Greg Eden onto the wing. And Mahi Fanua from wing to centre. Lewis Johnson, the lone signing from Hull KR, comes onto the bench in place of Albert Vette, who has joined Featherston, also on loan. Well, loan signings have also been used by Trinity coach Mark Applegarth to bolster his squad, currently propping up the table. The latest of those is Nathan Mason, who has come from Huddersfield. Wakefield fans will be buoyed by the returns of Sam Hewitt, Rena Fatoni, hooker Liam Hood, and former New Zealand international Kevin Proctor. It certainly looks a much stronger side on paper than the one that went down 38-0 at St. Helens in the last round. Well, Applegarth will need the very best of Mason Lino tonight as he goes up against his former halfback partner at Trinity, Jacob Miller. Now in separate camps, neither have been able to fire attacks that have returned a paltry match average of 11 and 6 points. The Tigers' heavy favourites to win this one. When one looks, though, at the returning troops for Wakefield, might they be primed to upset those odds? Well, let's take you around the crowd here at the Mendehose jungle. Casper Tigers fans, John Wells, have they seen enough in performances this season to convince them that they can get over the top of Wakefield tonight? Well, I think you know they will always believe, and, and I think there is enough quality in that Casper Tigers side. The likes of Joe Westerman need to fire nine levels. We've already spoken about his ability, and then Jacob Miller needs to find a bit of rhythm uh, in attack as well. I think if they do that, they've got every chance. Yeah, for me, Wakefield just need to work hard on them, effort areas, the transitions, they need to run hard, kick well, chase well, and make Castleford keep tackling. It's a really easy game plan for me. The more work Castleford have to do, the weaker they get, and I think Wakefield can pinch it back end of the game. All right, let's take you into the change rooms here at the Mendehose Jungle. Final words from the coaches, both Mark Applegard and Andy Last. Will it be effort areas? Will it be desire? Will it be grit and determination? It'll be all of the above, and it will be, you know, effort areas can be defined as those actions that you make as a team that don't immediately result in reward for you, but they, they build over time. The support runs JJB, the kick pressure. Yeah, that support run, it might be support run number eight, where the offload comes and you push through and create the opportunity in that field position to execute a play and get get a try get the board rolling forward but for me looking down that Wakefield changing room having Kevin Proctor back having Liam Mudd back I think that'll make a big difference okay well the sides are ready to open up rivals round fasten your seatbelts folks West Yorkshire will shortly shake as Wakefield Trinity and the Tigers square off here on Sky Sports And they are in, and it's Baraimo in again. And they're in on the other side with Beretta. Baraimo. Lawler trying to go on his own and does so. Lino, and they've got Kershaw in, and Kershaw will get another try for Wakefield. He offloads it to Hood, and the try is awarded. Lovely try from Matty Ashurst. That's how you do it. Well, here they come, Wakefield and Castleford. It is only round eight, but standing pitch side here at the Mendoz Jungle, John Wells and Jamie Jones Buchanan. It feels big, it feels special, it feels like a pressure game. Absolutely, it really, really does. And there's an expectant crowd here. The home fans dominate, they expect to win for the Castleford Tigers, so do I.
Jamie Jones. I flip round. I think it's an easy game plan for Wakefield. I think they take him to the wire and it's do or die for Wakefield tonight. I'm going to back them to do it. And resurrect their season if they do it. It'll be witnessed by our commentary team tonight. Let's go to them now. It's Terry O'Connor and good evening to Bill Arthur. It is the first of seven live games in four days here on Sky Sports as an Easter feast of Rugby League action begins with this showdown between the bottom two in the Super League competition. Never mind rivals round, this could be survival round for these two. It's still early in the season, but if bottom of the table Wakefield are to get off the mark, then this game presents their best chance so far. Terry O'Connor, discuss. Yeah, you've got to make games like this personal, haven't you? I think both sides not been doing well in the league. Obviously, you play against your your local side and you, you just want to get out there and you want to perform. The last time we saw Cass, when they took on Leeds Rhinos here, they got the result that they were after. They got really stuck into them for the full 80 minutes. Wakefield, well, you miss four tackles and all of a sudden you could be 24 points behind on the scoreboard. You've got to make sure you're physical, you've got to make sure that you, you ramp up, you get into your game plan and settle into this game ASAP. Referee tonight, Marcus Griffiths, gets us underway at the Menderhose jungle, which has withstood a fair amount of rain this afternoon, but the clouds have cleared away for the moment. Bit dark over in the distance, could be in for some more rain, but conditions not bad at the moment. The Casper Tigers, first touch of the ball for them. Going into this game with just one win to their name this season, but they get they went very close last time out against the Casavit, against the Catalan Dragons. Did Casavit? It needed a try from old boy Mike McMeekin, in fact, for the Dragons to secure victory in that game. So Casavit will take a lot from that match going into this contest against the Wakefield side, still looking for their first points of the season. Played seven, lost all seven, fifth tackle, and Jacob Miller gets the first greeting from the Wakefield fans who used to cheer him. Now he's in Casavid Tigers colours. Well, that's, not, that's not a bad opening set, is it, for Cass? They've got more or less 95 metres with that. They got to the kick. They're looking at doing a job here defensively and make a statement early on against Wakefield. Well, Wakefield, despite their troubles this season, coming into this game with a bit more confidence by virtue of the fact they've got players back and they've got a few new recruits coming in, like Nathan Mason out there on loan, making his debut. Kevin Proctor back on the bench. It's going to boost them a bit. Yeah, it certainly will, but I think that the issue for for Wakefield is, is the attack and the creativity that they've got. They've been nilled in four of the seven games. That's a monster kick from uh, Mason Lino, but Greg Eden is underneath that. Full back in the last three, but Eden back on the wing for the Casavid Tigers this evening. Now then, here goes Jacob Miller, made 200 appearances in the colours of uh, Wakefield over eight seasons. Did Miller. Jordan Turner. Just shy of the halfway line of the Casavid Tigers. Westerman. Suya Matangi starting this one. His ninth start in three seasons at the Casavid Tigers. So used to seeing him come off the bench, but Andy Last giving him a, a run in the starting ranks. Now then, a little step from Broadbent. Broadbent looking for some support. He's got it from Mella. And Meller is brought down just short of the line. That's the fifth tackle. Broadbent caused Catalan Dragons problems last week. McShane! McShane gets the first try of the night on the back of that brilliant break from Jack Broadbent. It's McShane who strikes for his first try of the season. Wakefield's defence in disarray. And McShane, such a seasoned campaigner, is the man to capitalise on a situation like that. That's exactly what he did. Yeah, well, Paul McShane, one of the shrewdest hookers around, isn't he? Cass wanted that quick start, they got it. It was quite direct, the way that they played the game. Just nice, solid. Jack Robin, like you said, Bill, he was outstanding last week. Come up with a 90-meter effort against Catalan. It was quality. Paul McShane, well, he's just scanning either side of the road. He's having a little look what's in front of him. The bit of, dump, the bit of dummy uses, I think it's Massey as a as a foil, and Hewitt, well, he just can't come up with the tackle, the perfect tackle that was needed on Paul McShane. 
minutes, but Shane Hull looked to improve on his own try. He kicked three goals, or he has done this season. And that's his fourth. Kicked three against Catalan last week. Well, you've just got to make sure you, you get that attacking shape right. You can see that Paul McShane, he uses Massey. A couple of the Wakefield defenders have got eyes for him. Hewitt has switched off at marker. Couldn't stop the former Man of Steel winner from getting over for the opening try. And after just, what was it, just under three minutes to score the opener, that'll be really disappointing for Mark Applegarth. And it's given the Tigers and their supporters a big lift. They like that run from Suei Amitangi. It's interesting to see Jack Broadbent's contribution already. I was think, speaking to Andy last uh, ahead of this game, and he said Broadbent was outstanding against Catalan, set up two of their tries, yeah. and he could be he could be a long-term answer. Yeah, well, it's on the back of strong runs like that from Matanga, and he's not a natural half-back. He plays full-back, he plays centre. So when he, Jack Broadbent gets hold of the ball, he'll take on the line. He's a runner, and that's certainly what he's done over the last couple of weeks. Now, Gareth Widdop again here this evening for the cast of the Tigers take a nil during the trip to Perpignan and still shaking off the bug he picked up as uh, Miller hoist the kick now then Will Dagger is underneath it positions himself well together that ball making his second appearance Will Dagger since the swap move with Corey Hall taking Hall to uh, Hull Kingston Rovers we did well and that's another good kick isn't it just drops before the trial end Wakefield under some pressure They've got some real intent, the way they're defending in this game. Will Dagger's claim to fame already this season, the first 18th man to be used in a game. That was against uh, against the Catalan Dragons last month, after three head injuries for the Wakefield side. Oh, then the error. The ball's knocked on, says the referee of Wakefield. will turn over possession. Well, that's it, you've got to make sure that you do end your sets well, and you can see that the ball goes straight over the top of Jai Whitbread. The pass from Leon Hood just wasn't good enough. And Mark Applegarth on the sideline, the Wakefield coach, will be disappointed with the opening six minutes. Conceded a try, making mistakes, can't get the ball far enough away from the try line. Mark Applegarth, former head of youth. Great experience in the development side of the game. And now succeeding Willie Poaching trying to steer Wakefield away from the bottom of the table but he has got a, an almighty task on his hands as his have his side at the moment as they are defending as Nathan Massey starting at prop again drives the ball up to the 10 meter line Westerman simple on to Miller the ball is loose and it's still loose and it's gone backwards no it hasn't says referee Marcus Griffiths it was knocked on A lot celebrating by the, the Wakefield players. Joe Westerman, the ball just over the top of Jacob Miller. He can't control it. Then Jai Whitbread. Just desperate to get onto the ball before the referee says, no, that was a knock on. They just can't put themselves under pressure there. They need to get through this set of six. Wakefield get to the kick. Even if they have to kick into corners and defend strongly. Here is Sami Soni Lange, Catalan Dragons getting an awful lot of mentions this evening, a former Catalan player, Lange. Now in the colours of Wakefield, eventually had one move to Wakefield that didn't go through a few years ago. Mason Lino. Here is Reese Lynn. Bags of experience with Reese Lynn, over 200 Super League appearances for Trinity. Kershaw. Weaving run from him. Whitbread up to that Castleford 40 meter line. Here is Mason and Mason trying to offload it. Bill, they go the wrong side. I think it's Liam Hood that gets out from dummy half. It was a really good run from Mason. Quick play of the ball. He gets down quick. Mason is the man who makes the mistake, but the previous time he played the ball, he gets down quick. They go the right-hand side, and unfortunately, come up with the, with the error here. He's trying to force the pass there, Nathan Mason. 
Heads in, guys. Making his 150th career appearance this evening on his debut for Wakefield. Been joined on loan from Huddersfield. So, Beretta Ferraimo as Castleford worked the ball up to their own 40 metre line. Here is Mella. And Wakefield, having conceded that early try, looking to stop Castleford building up ahead of steam here. Tangy plays the ball. Here is Joe Westerman. Westerman flicker the ball to Mella. Nice, nice hands. Onto Broadbent, just inside Wakefield's 40 now as the former Leeds man plays the ball. Westerman once more drives the ball in. The kick high from Miller towards Kershaw's wing. He's safe underneath that. Well, it's good pressure, isn't it? And again, from this cast side, that line speed, it's giving Riesling nowhere to go. On the second tackle, a few metres from the line, does well to take that ball, Kershaw, but he knows as soon as he gets it, there's Cass plays waiting to effect the tackle. And obviously, Cassiford, the way that they've started this game, there's a lot of focus on the defence, a lot of focus on the go forward and keeping it simple. Liam Hood. Good scampering run from him, set restart, signalled. So can Wakefield build on the back of that. Morgan Smith appealing for the referee as that play the ball seemed to take forever. Now here is Nathan Mason once more. Just shy of that Tigers 40. Morgan Smith on it goes to Mason Lino. Lino hesitates and then gets the pass away. Lino, you can see him organising operations. There he is now, just drops the ball off to Jai Whitbread. In his second season with Trinity, his first was pretty impressive. Morgan Smith, a little darting run from him. Closest Wakefield have been to that Castle of the Tigers try line now. What can they make of this? Jay Pitts, on it comes to Lino. Lino, Will Dagger, Dagger, Samisoni, Lange, and Senior couldn't take the pass, it was just behind him. Is there a touch by Beretta Ferraimo though? They look to create the numbers out wide. And I think Beretta Ferraimo, as he's jamming in, he's getting caught out. Yeah, he just touches that ball as it's going to senior. You see Lange passes the ball. It's not doubt play, another set of six here. Wakefield have. That was promising for Wakefield though. In his senior, one try to his name. Probably thought there was another on the way there until Ferraimo put his hand in the way. Here is Nathan Mason driving his way to the line and denied by McShane. I always think they're dangerous players. You look at the size of Mason and Paul McShane. It's a mismatch, but he kept him up. Pitts, his whip bread will give him more of the same medicine. He's another solid figure in the Wakefield front row. Hood. Lino, short ball to Ashurst. Ashurst right on his shoulder. Mahe Fanua with the tackle. Hood. Here's Lino. Back comes Whitbread towards the middle of the field. Bang under those posts. And four tackles gone this set. Castleford Tigers on their own try line. Hood going for it. Ashurst is brought down. More good work from Mahe Fanua in the tackle to drive Ashurst back. Fifth tackle it is. What's Lino going to come up with? Shape to kick. They're going to run it. And Morgan Smith is going to try his hardest to get to the line. But he is denied at the last. And Castleford applaud the defence. Yeah, that's great defence from Casper, isn't it? Working together. Mason Lino in that whole set was desperate to get his hands on the ball. And Smith, well, just denied by strong defence from Cass. If, as you can see, look, he shapes the kick. Smith just pumps that ball, but solid defence from Castleford. But an encouraging phase of play for Wakefield, their best so far this evening. You know, any team that's got Mason Lino in their side needs to be this end of the field. He's an attacking player. Ferraimo flung that ball backwards and Evels couldn't take it. And Jordan Turner furious. Well, you look at Jacob Miller as well, the way that he reacted. Look, he ran hard, he earned the right to get his arm free, but 
maybe when you're bottom of the table you don't do that 20 meters from your line it's a it's a tough ball to, to take especially at that speed it wasn't a soft pass no was it? the speed was the speed the weight of the pass was was far too much well they're inviting Wakefield into their territory now with the Casava Tigers there was the knock-on from Ferraimo there's the wild pass and Wakefield have got possession once again just outside the 20 Hoods Morgan Smith here's Mason Lino Lino will dagger dagger ducking under the challenges they're trying to get him over the line they will do that's good defense and dagger could not stop the momentum well, two big players in defense the nine levels one that was holding smith up and then this player here working from the inside mahe fanua just gets hold of dagger long enough before beretta for comes in along with alex meller and just drags him over the sideline and that's it you celebrate defense like you celebrate good attack and beretta for redeeming himself there i'm sure well you know as a player when you've let yourself down or you've let your teammates down and you've you've forced an error and like you said beretta for joined in celebrated that effort wakefield desperate to put an end to this seven game losing start to the season their worst of the super league era worse than the six defeat start they endured in 2021 and of course so much hanging on this season with the structure of the game the shape of the game changing and clubs very much conscious of of their need to survive and be ready for the new environment yeah that look forward from shane to massey yeah a lot of sides are, are nervous aren't they and this wakefield side well, I said you, you looked at him last week and John Wells said before the game that it was just maybe the last pass the last catch because they got through Saints a number of times but just couldn't quite finish it off and that was a team that really looks like they've not got any confidence when they're making 17 errors and missing 42 tackles in a game those stats aren't good enough for 80 minutes well we've got the two lowest scorers in Super League on show this evening Casper 12 tries Wakefield 7 We've got one try on the board so far. It's been scored by the Casava Tigers. Is this a 40-20? Across comes Niall Levels to gather that ball and deny Wakefield that opportunity. Do you know, it's a nice play, though, by Will Dagger. He spots some space at the back, spots the field, goes for it, doesn't come off, but still turns Cass around, kicks him into the corner, and now it's what can they do? What can they achieve with this defensive structure? Here's Greg Eden now. By rights, this should be a 10-6 game. Castleford are averaging 10 points a game. Wakefield, 6. We've got 6-0 at the moment. The try from McShane, the goal from McShane early on. Here is Jordan Turner. Well, he gets a penalty. Jordan Turner, is it for the high shot? From a tawny. Is that his first involvement? Renew for Tony, just off the bench. That's where the arm ends up. That's where the, the referee Marcus Griffiths give it. Not much in it to refer, but again, it's one of them where you've got to be clinical, you've got to be disciplined. A tackle like that now gives Castleford 30, 40 metres. Yeah, they've spent a lot of time in the last uh, maybe 10 minutes down at their own end of the field of the Castleford Tigers. So that has released the hold Wakefield had on them. And just two balls on the pitch, so the referee Marcus Griffiths just calls a, a halt for a moment before Westerman plays the ball. McShane, here is Matangi. Renufa Tony gets a hold of him. McShane, here is Miller, short ball from Miller to Massey. Three tackles gone. Casava Tigers looking to hit Wakefield again here is Suia Matangi fourth tackle in front of those posts maybe about five meters away McShane's short pass Westman tries to smuggle the ball out McShane picks it up thinks about a second and the referee eventually 
blows for the knock on. Yeah, well, Mason Lino over the top of Paul McShane. Well, near the line, trying to get your bumpers up. Paul McShane just gets that scrappy offload from Joe Westerman. Mason Lino over the top. There's a little tug of the ball from Mason Lino in a two man tackle. That should have been a penalty, really, for, for Castleford to get away with it. And teams at the bottom of the table, they need some luck. How do you get a penalty out of that? You strip the ball off him. Whenever a ball, whenever a ball spews out the tackle like that, when the tackle's finished, normally there's a hand in there. One, Hold me, wait, wait. You're on your own this evening. Your pal's at home with his feet up. Yeah. Enjoying his time off. He's Lee Kershaw. Now Renouf Atoni. of uh, Canterbury, Tony, now then Matty Ashurst making his 37th consecutive appearance. Oh, that's a, a straight pass and it's lucky it had landed in the hands of uh, Samisoni Lange, he weaves his way into Castleford Tigers territory but that's the last tackle and Eden is underneath the ball, claims it and good chase from Reese Link, Kershaw there as well. Greg Eden, he was another good performer last week in the south of France. I thought he looked sharp. Let's not forget, I think he was man of the match when uh, Leeds Rhinos rocked up into town a few weeks ago. He's broad bent once more. He's got that show and go again, hasn't he? The work he just needs to fire in here. Well, set restart again is not going to help them. Is Beretta Faraimo set restart signal. Let's go down to the sideline and hear from Jenna. Yeah, evening, Bill. Just an observation. The Wakefield Trinity head coach, Mark Applegarth, I can tell you, has not gone up into the stands, which most coaches do here at the Mendehose Jungle. He is down on the touchline. There he is there, and he is barking orders, if you like, at his players, of course. It's been the worst start to a Super League season for Wakefield. Seven defeats in as many games. They're trying to get their first win here at the Jungle tonight. Thanks, Jenna. They trail by six points to nil, and is there a, a Wakefield hand in there? Did Kershaw just nudge that? Well, he pulls the trigger, doesn't he, Kershaw? I don't think he touches it, though. I think the ball comes for, forward off Jordan Turner, is it? And Wakefield do get the ball. Well, they wedge in. You see, it's quick hands from Nile Lavals. It looks like there was fingers to refer, Bill. Might have got away with one there. Wakefield's head and feet. Quarter of the game gone. They'll probably be thankful that it is only 6-0 because that early try from McShane rocked them. They've steadied the ship well of Wakefield. Yeah, they were under the pump. Then they were putting some pressure on Castleford for about five or ten minutes up near their line. But I think what, what works for, for Wakefield has been nice and direct instead of playing lateral. Let the forwards make big inroads. I know it's difficult when you've got you're confronted by some solid defence like that. And the Wakefield players have got their hands up because the, the play of the balls, the rooks are a bit too slow. They've been dominated, turned on the back. Liam Kay, who's just come on to replace Liam Hood in that hooking role. There was a bit of a doubt about Liam Hood going into this game. Just a, a bit of a, a niggle, potentially. He started, but he's been replaced by the versatile Liam Kay. Here's the versatile Will Dagger. And a bit of obstruction there. Yeah. Well, he's on it, isn't he? He called it, Marcus Griffiths, straight away. They look to get the numbers out wide. And Sammy Sony Lange looks run into Mahe for now. Runs straight into him, obstructs him. Again, it's another call that's not gone their way. Big crowd here at the Menderhose jungle, but it's a bit subdued at the moment. Yeah. Just I think the fans are as see. nervous as the players, to be fair. Are. I think they are. I mean, it is early days in the season. And yet you get the feeling that if Wakefield are going to turn the tide, then this is the sort of game, the best chance they're going to have. Well, having said that, they got very close against Salford just the other week, lost in Golden Point extra time, 13-14. That's the closest they've come this season. 
They're trailing at the moment to this Casavid Tigers side who have George Lawler in possession. Just clocked up a hundred Super League appearances as Lawler. Broadbent. Here is Evels. Evels taking him on. Brought down by Lino and Samisoni Lange. Casavid Tigers threatening here. Here is Westerman. Westerman taking it into the heart of Wakefield's defence. About 12 metres or so away from the line. Run around with McShane. Miller. Jordan Turner comes back across the field. Turner looking for a hole, but Jay Pitts nice comes tackle. out the line nice and tackle. brings him down. He's Broadbent, a little step from Broadbent, but Wakefield read that. And Liam Kay was there to make the tackle, and that'd be the turnover. And that's what I mean when, with Jack Broadbent, because he's not a natural six. I'm not saying he's not got a good kicking game, but he is a runner of the ball, and he gets his hands on the ball on the last play. He's looking for that big step. He's looking to get defenders going towards the sideline and to expose them. The shape from Casaford, attacking shape is really good. Now 24 minutes, they're just leading by six points. And that try, that change try, Wakefield be kicking themselves because that was a defensive switch off, wasn't it? Yeah. They were punished for a, a bit of sloppiness. Well, any lapse in concentration, like I said, you switch off for one second. And all of a sudden, you look up at the scoreboard and you're six behind. Renu for Tony. Little ball back from Mason Lino to Matty Ashurst. He was ever present all last season, was Ashurst, and he hasn't missed this season yet. He hasn't missed a game since September 2021, in fact. Is Lino, nice step from Lino, then gets the pass away to Morgan Smith. Smith to Reese Lynn. Lynn looking to. Keep the ball alive, but that was on the last. It'll be the turnover. Well, Desperation Mason. there. Yeah, Mason Lino. Well, he spots something, doesn't he? He plays on instincts. Mason Lino looks down that short side. He goes for it. It doesn't quite come off, but again, where they turn the ball over under some pressure there. Reese Lynn, Greg Eden all over him. Loses possession. Well, you'd rather make a mistake that end of the field and close to your own line. Wakefield have found, uh, found points hard to come by on their travels. They've been nilled in three of their four away matches so far this season. Oof, that nearly went wrong for the Casavid Tigers. Here's Mella now. Mella cantering down the field. And making good yards for the Casavid Tigers. But a sloppy pass finds Broadbent. Had to stop and pick that ball up. Four tackles gone. 20 metres away from Wakefield's line as Jacob Miller takes the ball and the cheers of the Wakefield supporters. Is Lawler now driven sideways by Wakefield's defenders. Well, That's the fifth the tackle. He's lost it in the tackle. And Renu Fantini and Liam Kay celebrate there. Well, Tony, he's a big man. I was really impressed with him when he played against Leeds Rhinos earlier on in the year. Big, powerful player, physical. You can see slams him to the ground. Whitbread's got his shoulder under the ball. He pulls away from the tackle. The ball spews out. And you'll take that mistake from Lawler. They've got 90 metres to go here to get up the other end of the field and maybe get over the try line. And they've still got 90, just about, probably 88 now. As Samisoni Lange finds territory hard to come by. Here is Jay Pitts. In his second spell with Wakefield. A Tony. Wakefield edging their way towards their own 40 metre line, but that's three tackles gone. Tries of forward from the Casavid Tigers supporters as Jordan Crowther plays the ball. Kevin Proctor is on. He's back in the side, having missed the last three games. The former New Zealand international. Here is Mason Lino. Deep kick into the arms of Greg Eden. Looking for a bit more distance on that ball then. Mason Lino. Quite an easy catch at the back from Greg Eden. Look how compressed they are. All those white jerseys for Wakefield. 
knowing that the first two or three plays from Casper are going to be nice and tight around the run. Paul McShane just examining what's in front of him at market and those tight defenders either side of the play the ball. Renew for Natoni, two of the uh, Ruth, Renew, Renew for Atoni and Kevin Proctor, two of the new recruits for Wakefield this season. Here is Kenny Edwards. Bundle of energy Edwards is when he comes off the bench. Turner. Here is Miller. Muzzy Mustafa. As the coaches make the changes, Mustafa coming off the bench for Castleford. Miller. Dinks a little kick high into the air. Dagger was coming for it. The ball is batted back. Still on the last. Still alive with Miller. Miller loops the pass to Ferraimo. Ferraimo flicks the ball away. It's Mahi Fanua. Fanua's kick. It's still loose. And Miller almost capitalised on that. Who's knock on? Wakefield knock on. Castle get the ball back. Yeah, well, I think Will Dagger knocks on. And again, I think they could be lucky here that they don't get done for a. Uh, the man stood in front of them, Will Dagger. well, he's just desperate at the back. They're just trying to cut the play down. You can see, I think it comes off Matty Ashurst in an offside position. That could have been a penalty for Castleford. Offloads it, gets rid of it. The kick, yeah, comes forward, hits Ashurst. Another set of six, though, they've got to defend. Coming up to the half-hour mark. And the Castleford Tigers leading by six points to nil, but an opportunity maybe to put more points on the board here as the ball reaches Niall Evolds back in the side, having missed the last four game. Evolds, a real strike player, although he's in a bit of a lean patch. Evolds plays the ball 10 metres out. Muzzy Mustafa driving it hard. A Tony stands his ground. Do you know, he's a bundle of energy, isn't he? McShane. Here is Jacob Miller, Broadbent little step and Broadbent cut down, good tackle from Mason Lino, Ashurst arriving over the top, McShane, McShane's pass, Lawler, try scorer at Huddersfield a few weeks ago but stopped by the Wakefield defenders there, Jacob Miller's pass, Evels puts the brakes on, Lynn applies more pressure on him to stop him in his tracks here's McShane little kick from McShane comes back to him and Wakefield come up with the ball well they were hunting really hard and they end up getting the ball still got it all to do here you get confidence in that and Wakefield when you consider all the pressure that they've been under in this game as they get another set restart the look at that scoreboard to think right we're doing a decent job they've got to keep doing it though for 50 minutes here is Samisoni Lange, played for France in the World Cup last year. Did Samisoni Lange by virtue of the fact that he'd spent so long in France with the Catalan Dragons. The ball touched by the Casper Tigers. So Wakefield gets six to go. Here is Kevin Proctor. Yeah, he offers the ball. You can see it's patted down by Mahe Fanua. Here's Lino once more. Here is Ashurst now. Ashurst to Senior. Senior cutting back in field. He's causing problems, Mason Lino. Always creating the overlap out wide. Broadbent for Rimo with the tackle. 20 metres away. Here is Jordan Crowder. Crowder. Up to the 10 metre line. K. Still going. Still going. He's held up just short of the try line. So Kevin Proctor, here is Mason Lino now. Lino sh showed the dummy. Castlefer Tigers not buying it. That's the fifth tackle. Samisoni Lange. Dagger, Dagger, little grubber kick, and it's straight into the hands of McShane. Now McShane being pursued by Dagger, looking for some support by Greg Eden. Eden goes outside Dagger. Eden going all the way now. Eden will not be caught. Greg Eden turns that Wakefield attacking opportunity into a Casper Tigers try. McShane grabbing the ball. He knew he didn't have the pace, but he knew a man that did. It was Greg Eden getting his first try of the season and breaking Wakefield's hearts. They have struggled to get a sight of the Castleford Tigers try line. When they did, they gave the ball to Castleford.
and ended up seeing them go in to score the try. Well, what a cruel game. All of a sudden, you're attacking one end. Then Paul McShane, well, he gets hold of the ball, and those little legs, well, they're not quite as fast as what they used to be. But one man who's got quick legs, Greg Eden, he gets one opportunity, gets one crack at it, and he's always going to score that try. Nyla Balch has come up with two big, big defensive players to prevent Wakefield from scoring tries. And then Paul McShane was ready to pounce, gives the ball to that man. And that's a sign of a, of a good side, although they're at the bottom of the end of the table. Great opportunities, the opportunities that are presented, you've got to finish them. And Greg Eden did that, and Andy Last will still his application in for the head coaching job going forward. He'll be pleased with the start. Takes Greg Eden to 97 Super League tries for the Castleford Tigers. Paul McShane with the conversion attempts as half-time approaches. And that is a crushing blow for Wakefield, who recovered well from conceding that very early. Was it three minutes, that try from McShane? But then... McShane broke away, McShane everywhere for Castleford this evening. He converts that, they lead by 12 points to nil. Well, Cass haven't took any shortcuts in this game, even when they were lining up to defend. The spacing was right, everything was right, there was a lot of talk, communication. Paul McShane said he gets hold of that ball. Greg Eden, one of the quickest men in Super League, gets hold of this ball. And how many times have we seen him go over a line like that to score important tries? And they kick that out on the full, oh. yes, they have. It goes from bad to worse for, for Wakefield. Let's hear from the Casper Tigers coach, Andy Last, who, Andy, you must be pretty pleased with the, the first half so far. Yeah, I'm happy with aspects of the performance, but there's some areas that we really, really need to tidy up. Um, I'd like us to be a little bit more precise and detailed in our good ball attack. Um, I think we're looking a little bit just disjointed there. Uh, but defensively, I think we've been very, very good. Um, we've staffed them with some field position and the periods where we've had to defend our trial and we've done that exceptionally well. And that was a real opportunist finish from Greg Eaton, wasn't it? That's ex exactly who you want in a situation like that. Yeah, well, Makarov was short, short his speed over 40 <laughs> metres. His little legs were running like Son at the edge jog. Um, and obviously Greg was there in, in good position. So, yeah, really good to score a try on a bit of a counter punch. Thanks, Andy. No problem. <laughs> and here, off the back of that restart that went out on the full, come the Casper Tigers once again in the closing minutes of this first half. They lead by 12 points to nil. And Miller... Gets the ball to Kenny Edwards, who ducked under the first challenge. Good job that Renew for Tony and Proctor were there to stop him making any more progress. Here is McShane, spins the ball out to Miller. Miller going across the field, short pass finds Westerman. Westerman steaming onto that. Four tackles gone, just to the right of the posts. They are McShane, McShane, little grubber kick, dribbles in, and Miller was chasing it, but it's batted down by Will Dagger. Well, all about building pressure from that man, Paul McShane. He knows there's only four minutes to half-time. He just turns the screw yet again on Wakefield. And they want to play in this good ball earlier this side. Will Dagger not taking any chances, grounding the ball just behind the try line. Will they be looking for depth on this kick? He's got a bit of a breeze at his back, Dagger. Miller ducks under that pass from uh, Niall Evels. And then Muzzy Mustafa drives the ball back towards that Wakefield try line. Still time for Casavid Tigers. Fancy a few more points on the board before the interval. Here is Westerman. They're inside that Wakefield 20. Lawler. Kay gets a, a piggybacked to bring him down. Bang in front of those posts they are now, McShane, Westerman, but Weston stationary virtually when he took that pass. Crowther making the tackle, here is Lawler once more. Lawler trying to wriggle his way through. Held up, says the referee. So they come back to the 10-metre line. Still plenty of tackles for them to go at. Here's Mustafa now. They're really driving it into this Wakefield defence of the Casavid Tigers. McShane 
Here is Westerman. McShane on the run around. Meller bobs the ball out the back to McShane. McShane shapes to kick. McShane, oh, the ball is batted down. Not on, says the referee. But he has got the scent of points tonight, as Paul McShane. Well, they come up with an outrageous dummy here. He gets hold of the ball, looks to kick. Sammy Sony Lange just came back and just rescued that then as he was stood up by Paul McShane, but strong defence. And then from the inside, from Wakefield, who will get the ball back. He's causing problems, Paul McShane. Former man of steel, Paul McShane, who went into the season. Came into the season, I think, with a bit of a knock. Doesn't look uh, below par this evening. He forget as well, he had a couple of seasons at Wakefield. Head and field to Wakefield then. So at least they get their hands on the ball. And have avoided any further punishment. 12 0, the bottom of the table, Trinity side trail. Is Kay. Crowther, Kevin Proctor now. Broadbent clinging on to the ankle to stop his progress. Kay. Matty Ashurst, Meller making the tackle, Westerman in there as well. Here is Mason Lino, Lino toying with the Castleford Tigers defence and then a burst of pace. Here is Rhys Lynn, strong centre Rhys Lynn. It's taken four of them to stop his progress, that's the fifth tackle. Kershaw. Morgan Smith on it comes to Crowther, Crowther to Mason Lino, Lino keeping it going, Dagger, Dagger to Samisoni Lange, the ball hits Beretta Faraimo. Physical player, Beretta Faraimo, and he's renowned for some big, big hits, and he times that to perfection, doesn't he? When he comes in on Samisoni Lange, he hits him with everything, just as Lange's trying to get the ball to senior. He comes in, belts him, oof! Who says wingers can't defend? <laughs> that kind of sums up the first half for Wakefield. Promising situations, but snuffed out by some really solid Casover Tigers defence. And when the Casover Tigers have had their opportunities, we haven't been that many. They've taken the most of them, they've made the most of them to lead by 12 points to nil at the interval. Bill, Terry, thank you very much. It sums up the season, Bill, for Wakefield. Yet again, they have ended a half of rugby league scoreless. Where are the points going to come from? Well, you would imagine they thought they'd be going in with a six-point deficit until Paul McShane swooped up on a loose pass and found the flying Greg Eden on his outside. And the cast star, well, he finished under the post to give his side a very healthy half-time lead. Analysis with John Wells and Jamie Jones Buchanan after this. from Broadbent, Broadbent looking for some support, McShane, McShane gets the first try of the night, Dagger Little grab a kick and it's straight into the hands of McShane, now McShane being pursued by Dagger, looking for some support by Greg Eden, Eden goes outside Dagger, Eden going all the way now, Eden will not be caught, We are 40 minutes into Rivals round and it's the Casper Tigers fans here at the Mendoho Jungles who are smiling. They have a 12-0 half-time lead over near neighbours Wakefield Trinity who are trying to play their way back into this game and play their way back into this season, John Wells. Yeah, absolutely. And I think for both sides, particularly with Wakefield, however, the next 10 minutes, the first 10 minutes of this second half could define not only the result of this game, not only the result of their season, but their status as Super League play players. There, there is Michael Carter, chief executive of Wakefield Trinity, who has initiated or has signaled his intent to stand down at the end of the season. I just wonder, for Mark Applegarth, his appointment, how crucial the next 40 minutes is. Yeah. Because if it doesn't go their way, Wakefield may look to make a change and it, to ignite their side. And it will weigh very heavily on Michael Carter as well, because Mark Applegarth is well-respected and, and well-liked, and it's not a decision that he will take lightly. Yeah, contest this, King. Look, 
Gordon, Daryl Powell, the former coach here at Castle of the Tigers, built an empire, he was outstanding, but he was a great coach. Struggled last year with Warrington, right? Persevered, but he had that backdrop, that prior history to lean on. Mark Applegarth hasn't got that, you know, he's a previous youth coach, and that for me is what's disappointing because in, under different circumstances, with a different group that hasn't been turned over as much as Whitfield, you know, this might not be a reflection of who he is as a coach, as a practitioner. Well, his side were first out on the field here at the Mendoho Jungle to start the second half, but they have been second best so far. What does the second half hold for Wakefield Trinity fans in here? Will it be Casimir that seal the win? You'll find out with our commentary team of Terry O'Connor and Bill Arthur. Thank you, Brian. Can Wakefield turn the tide here? They need to start scoring tries, and that they have struggled to do. They scored four in their round one home defeat to the Catalan Dragons. 24-38, that finished. Four in that game. They've just scored three in six subsequent matches. Lewis Murphy missing. The man who scored four tries against, against St. Helens last season in a 34-18 victory. Wakefield... The only team to win at Saints last season. Lewis Murphy, four tries in that game. What they wouldn't give for that sort of finishing power as they start this second half trailing by 12 points to nil. Well, they probably need the same mentality as they had when they played against Salford away from home. And you know, you saw Mark Applegarth in the change rooms, very animated, and, and he would be, he'd be frustrated with chances that they have missed and the way that his side had performed. And I agree with, with JJB that, look, this isn't his side. Edward needs time. He's well respected by all the players, missing some key players that left the club last year to make a career at Elksworth. Maybe if Mark Applegarth would have given the job, they may have stayed. Who knows now? Well, looking for a positive start to this second half for the uh, white-shirted Wakefield Trinity players. Sam Hewitt plays the ball. Morgan Smith hurriedly gets the kick away, and Evels is underneath it, just outside his own goal area, and is put to ground on the 10-metre line. Looking. Wakefield looking to, to rattle the Casava Tigers early in this second half to try and get some authority on this game they had a really good purple patch they had a couple of opportunities couldn't convert those into scoring chances but when you look at the previous seven games that they've had they've always had a purple patch in the game where they've always performed but consistently doing it over 80 minutes they've not been able to do that is Mahe Fenua playing the ball on the Castle of Tigers 40 meter line here is Joe Westerman now to shy of the halfway line as a 33 year old Westerman Plays the ball. Now Jacob Miller with the deep kick. Dagger underneath the ball and then runs it straight back towards Lawler and Muzzy Mustafa. Dagger and Lawler, former Hull Kingston Rovers colleagues. That's good Here is defense. senior now. Paul McShane. When Dagger gets hold of that ball, it just goes nice and straight. You see Kay getting out, just trying to isolate a defender, but... Those defenders in Akasha, throughout the game, you just look at the scoreboard where the big fat zero is, they've done a decent job. Crowder playing the ball, here's Mason Lino, little step, drop of the shoulder, but Westerman, season campaigner, saw that one coming. Morgan Smith, outside of the boot, puts a good kick in, Eden claims it, Samisoni Lange there to pin him to the ground. Good little set that from Wakefield. Well, again, Mason Lino, whenever they do anything well, comes off the back of Mason Lino and now Laval's brave at the back under some pressure. Muzzy Mustafa compact, so strong. Muzzy Mustafa really like him. Eden. Here is Kenny Edwards now. Edwards unpredictable, weaving his way across the field. Edwards plays the ball. Here is Lawler now. Renew for Tony with the tackle on him. Nice kick from Miller. And he was doing that this time last year in a, in a Wakefield shirt. One of the senior pros, well respected. Now, whichever side he plays for and the game management that he possesses. 
It's right up there. Let's go down to the sideline. We can hear from James Ford, who's assistant to Mark Applegarth for Wakefield Trinity. James, what's the priority at the start of the second half? Uh, we need to improve physically. Certainly now we started in the first half. I thought we got rolled coming out of yardage, and then I don't think we ran hard enough. Uh, that gifted Castleford much more, much more territory to ask questions and, and kick from. So we spoke about it, and you know what? We, I think we started this half a little bit better, so uh, let's keep going. And there were some promising signs. Where, when you got into good territory, you, you posed a threat. Yeah, we did. We, you know, we we asked some good questions. We created a couple of chances, and we probably found the only pass or not pass in that sequence that that, that didn't score. Uh, but we've just got to keep keep batting away. There's some good players out on that field in wakey shirts, and uh, I'm sure it'll turn soon. Thanks, James. Thank you. Halfway line. It's Wakefield in possession. Renew for Tony playing the ball. Muggen Smith gets the kick away, and it's dropped by Ferraimo and there was just a bit of hesitation yeah, was. by Evels and Ferraimo just wondering who was going to go for that ball yeah there was exactly you know it's an easy assessment an easy plan and game plan what James Ford said then about the side being rolled quite simple you've got to run out of it you've got to tackle out of it and we'll play off the back of that that's all you need to do don't complicate the game when you're at the bottom of the table you're fighting for survival you're fighting for your your future get back to basics and do them well well what an opportunity this is then at the start of the second half for Wakefield Trinity after that error at the back by the Castleford Tigers head and feet to Wakefield 10 meters away and here's Samisoni Lange careering towards that Castleford Tigers line Evelton Westerman stopping his progress Liam Kay Kevin Proctor driving the ball in again Westerman is there Okay, here's Mason Lino. Lino on to Morgan Smith. Smith, it comes to Dagger. Dagger to Reese Lynn, but Castle Tigers had numbered up well in defence there. And nowhere for Reese Lynn to go. Three tackles gone this set as Morgan Smith gives the ball to Jordan Crowther. Ten metres away. Castle Tigers keeping Wakefield at bay at the moment. K, here's Renew for Tony. The ball on to Lino. Lino, the pass reaches Senior. Senior cuts back in field, goes to ground before they can put him into touch. But that's the fifth tackle. Can Castleford Tigers withstand the pressure here? Lange, Mason Lino will kick cross field. They're all going to challenge for it. It's going to come up for the Castleford Tigers in the end. It's knocked on. Miller protesting that the ball went backwards. Marcus Griffiths, the referee, tells him, nope. Knock on. Well, he puts himself in perfect position, doesn't he? Mason Lino with the kick, drops it on the head of Jacob Miller. And as he goes up, the referee, Marcus Griffiths, in a good spot. He says that that ball's gone forward. I think it's gone backwards. Initially, it bobbled when Miller went up for it. And again, it's Mason Lino. You give him the ball, something's going to happen. Well, Wakefield cannot ask for a, a better position at the start of this second half. They wanted a response. They've got a good platform for it. Back-to-back -back sets here, and a penalty to boot. Is that the first of the game, Ian? No, I beg your pardon, no, it wasn't. It was out on the full, wasn't it? I think this is Wakefield's first of the game. What they've had. Yeah, I think of an obstruction as well, but it has not been littered with penalties this game. Here is Crowther now. So Wakefield being invited to attack this cast of a Tigers line. Renouf Atoni. It's his dad's favourite player, Steve Renouf, so he called his son Renouf. And here is Mason Lino. Lino to Dagger. Dagger short ball. Sammy Stoney Lange gets the try for Wakefield. They strike back. Mark Appleberth. Applegarth is cool and collected on the sideline. But Sammy Stoney Lange strikes for his first of the season. And the Wakefield supporters celebrate. They have earned that at the start of this second half. Well, Mark Arthur will be more confident now. Like I said, he was animated at half-time. They needed that field position. They get hold of the ball. And they're offside here, Castleford. And when you get down in, you've got a player like Mason Lino in your side. 
you're going to cause some problems. You get him on the ball as much as you can. He holds up some defenders. Will Dagger does a decent job as well. Gets Mahe Fanua interested for that split second. And when you see Mahe Fanua just having a little look what's going on with Will Dagger, it just buys a bit of time for the powerful centre, Sami Sony Lange, to barge over the line. And like I said, Will Dagger, good ball. Lange, good finish. And Wakefield back in this game. And a successful conversion from Mason Lino would be a further boost for this Wakefield side after Samisoni Lange's first of the season. Lino from the sideline can't drag it round. 12 4. Well, James Ford was telling us they, they wanted a positive start to the second half. They've got that. Yeah, like I said, run at it, tackle at it, turn up for your mate, players in motion around the man who's carrying the ball. Dagger did a decent job. Sanger gets over the line. Even though they've missed the conversion, they've scored points. They've managed to get over the try line, which will give them some confidence. And you track that back to that high kick that uh, Evels and Ferraimo got in a bit of a tangle with, got knocked on, and... That's the outcome, yeah, ultimately. So if, so if you work on that theory, Bill, for them to cause any problems and call Cass some trouble, they need to keep the ball down there. They need some powerful runs like that from a Tony. See, K desperate for the play, the ball to be quick. Strong defence. That's lifted Wakefield. That's a good response from Kenny Edwards in the colours of the Castleford Tigers. Now here's Kevin Proctor. Legs driving the former Kiwi international. 22 caps for New Zealand, Kevin Proctor. Morgan Smith, Reese Lynn just shuffles past one of the Casper Tigers defenders. And here comes uh, Kershaw towards the middle of the field. That's the fifth tackle. So Lino will put up another teasing kick, but this one is collected by Niall Evels. And Evels with Ashurst closing him down. Well, a couple of quick rooks, then all of a sudden, look at the light now that's in the Liam Kerr. Trying to stop play two from Ferraimo. And Jack Broadbent now just trying to get upfield and make a bit of a dint in the defensive line. It's McShane. Greg Eden, first half try scorer. This is one of those purple patches we spoke about, Bill, from Wakefield. They've got to keep this tone going and this tempo going. Westerman. Tackle boat by Renouf Tony and Miller. Deep kick in his senior, comfortably underneath that one. And then one of the low players in his senior in the Wakefield ranks is dumped to the ground. Well, Kenny Edwards again. Two tackles in the last minute or so. Come up with two bell ringers. It's Kershaw coming back across fields. Good technique, isn't it? Just to pick senior up and drop him. Ashurst tackled by Mahe Fanua. Castle of the Tigers responding to that Wakefield try with a good, strong defensive set here. Whitbread plays the ball on his own 40 meter line and looking for a 40 20 is Morgan Smith and getting it. What a response that is! Morgan Smith, once at Warrington, taking matters into his own hands there. Highly rated as a youngster, wasn't he, Morgan Smith? You've got to sum up really quick what's to play, what's best for the team. And that's a great kick. And again, look at that field position. Well, now then, can they capitalise? Here is Jai Whitbread. Jordan Crowther, Crowther to Mason Lino, Lino out the back, here is Reese Lynn, Lynn again, Jordan Turner, he and Jordan Turner having quite a tussle, Smith, here is Kevin Proctor, Proctor driving it in, Mustafa down low to initiate the tackle, dagger up top, here's Crowther, Mason Lino, Lino dagger and the ball is too strong and Scott Burrell, one of the assistant coaches, jubilant on the sidelines, one of the Castleford assistant coaches, as that Wakefield attack comes to nothing. Yeah, well, they get that shift wrong, don't they? Dagger just caught in two minds, he didn't, and he wasn't aware of where Lange was, or senior. 
I thought when they were attacking over on the right hand side, Reese Lynn, he steps back into the, the field of play. I thought if he would have pinned his ears back and gone for it, maybe he would have had a two on one, maybe he would have got over the line himself. They've got a big defensive set of six here. And I think a big seven minutes really for Wakefield. So Casper Tigers, who've been second best so far in this second half. Haven't much spent much time in Wakefield territory in actual fact since the resumption. Only points of the second half have come from Wakefield. Move together! Back it up! Score from Samisoni Lange, but Shane scoops the ball up and goes on a run over the halfway line. That's a good play. Paul McShane from Dummy Half Lawler over the advantage line. And then Miller with the boot, high again. In his senior, stakes a claim for that ball, gathers it, but it's a good follow-up tackle from Mella. Well, didn't he have to be brave then? He knew that Mella and Broadbent were just in the vicinity, desperate for the mistake. Look at this, gets out, gets people interested. It's a good 15, 20 metre player, that from Paul McShane, especially on the last tackle. So now Wakefield has got to grind their way back up the other end in the face of some determined Castleford defending. Here is Jay Pitts. Mella stands his ground to make the tackle just inside their own half. That's the fifth tackle. And Mason Lino will have the ball. It's a spiralling oh, kick. Wicked, kick. wicked, wicked kick. And Eden did well. Yeah, coming across, didn't he do well? He wasn't going to let that ball bounce, but like well, he said, it was a wicked kick for Eden to take. He dealt with it. You said it was a wicked kick. Two. We Sorry, both said it was a wicked kick. Here's Jordan Turner. Up to the halfway line come the cast of the Tigers. Have they weathered the storm? They only shipped that one try. Could have been worse. Turner shoves Morgan Smith out the way. He walks off the mark, though. Don't push forward, and you'll get a quicker run. On the line, three. And Marcus Griff is very calm, explaining the situation there, just getting Jordan Turner to play the ball where he was supposed to play it. Hold, go four. Here's Kenny Edwards. Kay it was down low with the tackle. Here's Miller now. Miller on the last teasing kick. Dagger will come for it and claim it. And Miller there to make the tackle as he comes back down to ground. Squeezing with everything, then he wasn't willing to let Dagger get up and play the ball quickly. Two. Move, George, and then you keep coming. Good listening, mate. Go to. Nice catch under pressure. I feel like they're just struggling. They had a really good patch. Five minutes, they were on the front foot. Now, all of a sudden, Castleford are just getting back into the game. Jacob Miller flying off the line. Gets the offload away to Kate. Liam Kate. Here's Matty Ashurst now. Ashurst and McShane, two seasoned campaigners going head to head there. Jay Pitts. Edwards stops his progress. That's the fifth tackle just outside Casford's 40 as Morgan Smith puts the high kick in. Evolds comes for it and gathers that one safely. Well, just trading sets now. Ball for this side. The game's gone into that bit of a lull where either side's desperate. Desperate for a penalty. Good run from Eden. Eden, Eden scampers through and is eventually hauled down. That's a penalty. Let's go down to the sidelines, here from Jenna. Yeah, Bill, I can tell you that there are over 8,000 in here at the jungle tonight, but it is the quietest crowd at this stadium that I can remember. It's not your usual party atmosphere here, that's for sure. A sense of perhaps nerves in the air. We all know how important this game is to both teams in the context of the season. Uh, two big points on the line tonight, that's for sure. Absolutely, yeah, it has been a an anxious atmosphere around the Mendehose jungle tonight. Neither, well, Castleford Tigers supporters aren't breathing easy yet, despite leading 12 points to four, and Wakefield supporters haven't given up hope, but they know that they need something here tonight to ignite their season. Another defeat, and it just prolongs the misery. Here is Miller, no-look pass from Miller. 
Turner plays the ball. McShane, one try to his name already this evening. Miller drops the ball off. Griffin, it is charging onto that pass. McShane's pass back in field to Evolds. Four tackles gone. Evolds is held up on his back. Casford threatening for the first time, I think, in this second half, really. Well, one more play now that Wakefield have got to defend. Looks like they're going to make a substitution as well and bring Liam Hood onto the field. Try and speed it up around the rook. On the last 10 metres away, it's Broadbent, Broadbent, and a charging run from Fryano, who loses possession. And they'll go back to the 20. So, Fryano looking to bulldoze his way through there, but nothing doing for him. Yeah, well, that's how you come onto the ball, isn't it? He made 182 metres last week of 21 carries in the south of France, very strong, did well to stop him. Former USA international Beretta Faraimo. Here is Jay Pitts. Jai Whitbread, which the Lee Centurions Whitbread and Gold Coast. He had an impressive season last year in Wakefield Colours. Morgan Smith, Mason Lino now, Lino trying to run foot Castleford's defence, four tackles gone. About 15 metres away they are now. Ashurst comes back into the middle of the field where he's greeted by Kenny Edwards and Griffin. Jay Pitts now on the last and Pitts running it, was he tripped? Or was it Joe Westerman that just sticks his foot out? You know, Jay Pitts is in a bit of, been a bit of trouble. You can see dummies, he goes. Yeah, he sticks his foot out, he was caught. He, it's definitely a penalty. Look, sticks it out, his nose has got it all wrong. Joe. Ten, minutes, oh, in ten the bin. minutes in the bin for Joe Westerman. Well, he knew we got that tackle all wrong, Joe Westerman, the former Wakefield favourite. And this game will mean so much to him. He was the player of the year back in 2021 for them. And reigning player of the year for the Castleford Tigers yeah, as well. Yeah, he's had an outstanding couple of years, but you can see he pumps the ball, takes it back. You can see Pitt, uh, Westerman, he's looking what's going on in front of him. He's looking at Mason Lino, he's looking at Crowther. He takes his eyes off. The man that's got the ball, Pitts. Well, a big ten minutes here now for Andy Lastman, isn't it? Down to 12, Wakefield on the attack and looking to strike again. Here is Whitbread. Castle of Tigers back on their own try line. The Wakefield supporters at their backs, urging their side on. Lino short ball. Ashurst was running onto it. And that's good defence from the Castle of Tigers as Matty Ashurst looked to find a way through. Hood will try and find a way through himself, but Wakefield are denied once more. Castleford Tigers getting numbers in there. So they go for a bit of width this time. Dagger on it comes to Mason Lino. Then he signals Crowther to come back on his outside. Castleford Tigers keeping Wakefield at bay at the moment. Having just had Joe Westerman sent to the sin bin, his whip bread, his pits and pits. Good defence once more. Kenny Edwards having a solid game for the Castleford Tigers this evening. Here's Lino once more. Lino, one dummy. It's Morgan Smith and Smith bouncing it almost opened up for him. Somehow smuggles the ball away. The referee signalling. They're yeah, saying that the tackle was complete. It was complete. Yeah. Obviously, the panic set in from Morgan Smith. He was just trying to get rid of that ball. He decided to take on the cast defenders. Cast defenders were strong over on the left-hand side, like they were over on the right. And Jack Broadbent coming up with a couple of good tackles, good efforts. That's a result. That's a result for Cass. Yeah. Well, this is good, solid defence. And look at that. That's a result for Wakefield. Jordan Turner sent backwards, McShane stopped in his tracks. 
There's a bit of fire in Wakefield bellies now after that try. The only try of this second half belongs to Wakefield, and they're trying to keep the Castleford Tigers down at their end of the field. Jordan Turner playing the ball. Massey. Some strong efforts now in defence from both sides, really. Here is George Griffin. Had a spell with Wakefield on loan back in 2015 to George Griffin and Miller now. Big deep kick. Senior. Who can defend these final 17 minutes? Who can close this game out? Here's Samisoni Lange, whose try has given Wakefield a bit of hope, and whose weaving run has given them a bit of territory. You know, you feel eight-point lead now from Cass just isn't enough at the minute. Especially with Westerman in the bin, this is a golden opportunity for Wakefield. Can they capitalise? Here is Ashurst, Ashurst on it comes to Dagger. Dagger for Nua with the tackle. Dagger slow to his feet, having taken a clout from Mercer's Fenua and Faraimo. He's whipbred now. Oh dear, a smack on the brow as Will Dagger. Here goes uh, Liam Hood, former Leeds man, Scottish international. Hood plays the ball. Mason Lino now, ball over the top. He comes off Faraimo, and it's gone forwards. Well, there's a forward pass. Forward pass. There was yeah, a knock on by that man, Faraimo, uh, but the ball drifts forward from Wakefield. Yeah, Mason Lino, ball, you can see, he throws that ball, it goes forward. Faraimo, no, yeah. the Wakefield ball, ball. fans, when this ball, ball goes yeah. over the top, all they can see is Faraimo jumping and thinking, oh no. You can see a metre forward. But desperate playing catch up, Mark Applegarth's men. Just trying to get over the top of Faraimo was uh, Mason Lino. And known as well, they've got that new medical advantage for probably about another five more minutes. Will, Will Dagger. Patched up his second appearance since his what? swap. Move, Wayfield! Back with me. Hold, wait, go one. Here is Jordan Turner. Two. Move, Sam, get Just away! Just the one try in this Hold. second half. It's a try that's given Wakefield some hope, but they've got to get more points on the board soonish to trouble this Castleford Tigers side, who spent most of this second half, it seems, away to our right. Yeah, they're the ones who've been doing an awful lot of defence in this second half. Well, now they're edging towards Wakefield territory. Well, even all that possession position that they've had in this second half, when he's managed to score. One try, Wakefield. Miller hoists the kick. Dagger, blooded, has his eyes on the ball, nevertheless. Yeah, he won't be concerned. Oh, Paul Will Dagger's made a hash yeah. of that. Yeah, it makes an error. And everyone will talk about playing the ball quickly. And Will Dagger, he tries his best, doesn't he, to get up, play the ball. Jack Broadbent. Jack Broadbent all over Jack Broadbent all over him. Casper, the decider that celebrate. It was a good kick chase. He's got an issue, obviously, with his eye, whether or not the, the ref will stop the, the game here so he can get some attention. And this is where he gets clobbered, I think it's Fenua over the top. And then Fenua and Ferraimo. Well, both of them just giving him a bit of afters when he's on the floor. For four, for four, for them. For right, <laughs> for for newer, for f exactly. They are two big guys, Beretta Faraimo and Mahe Fanua. Yeah, both of them physical, aren't they? Over yeah. on that right hand side, whether they're carrying the ball, defending, and Will Dagger. Well, all he wanted to do was catch that ball, get back into the action getting patched up there's no way that he wants to leave this field with 14 minutes to go will dagger unhappy with the situation joe westerman waiting for a chance to come back but his teammates have possession after that knock on at the play the ball 
and the Castleford Tigers in this second half have a rare opportunity to test Wakefield's defence. Just outside Wakefield 10, as McShane has Miller in support. Miller has Kenny Edwards coming back into the middle of the field. Runs into the defence of Jordan Crowther and uh, Whitbread. And here is McShane once more. Massey. Hits with the tackle, put in there to slow things down. Here is Broadbent, Broadbent, nice pass, and reaching out was Turner, just couldn't get there. McShane's little kick, the ball ricochets, and it's back with McShane. <laughs> Somehow, Lino and McShane were battling for that ball. Somehow, it's back in Casa Tigers' hands, ricocheting. Here is Miller. How he would love to score against his former club, but nothing doing for him there. Casaford supporters that end of the ground urging their side on, maybe to get the try that will settle this contest. Can Broadbent do it? Not like that. Running into the solid frame of uh, Whitbread. Here is McShane. Miller now. Miller. Evels loops the ball out wide, and Eden will get his second of the night. And the Casaford Tigers maybe close out this contest. A second half that has largely belonged to Wakefield, but the tables have been turned. And Greg Eden finishing off that move to get his second of the night and put more distance between the Casaver Tigers and Wakefield Trinity. 16-4 with the kick to come. Well, Paul McShane, will he come up with a play in the first half where he caught one of them? He kicks the ball, and then he steals it off Mason Lino. They get the ball back. And Paul McShane, he's always looking, always looking for an angle. Wakefield get up quick. They jam up, they try to be aggressive out wide, and maybe force the ball back on the inside. They're hunting. And a couple of nice little touches, first from Miller, then from Mavals, then to the man who's already scored a try, Greg Eden, goes in for his second. And will that be enough to clinch this game and open up a four-point advantage on the league table for Castleford over the near neighbours Wakefield? Takes Greg Eden to 98 Super League tries for the Castleford Tigers. And Wakefield dejected after such a big effort in this second half. But again, another error. Yeah, and at he, the back, and they brought the pressure on themselves. Yeah, and he's been the best Mason Lino. He's the one who's definitely looked like something was going to come off. Whenever he's had his hands on the ball, especially near Paul McShane and his side's line, well, a big kick here now. But McShane has been the ringmaster for the Castleford Tigers. Really in the thick of it, as you'd expect. And from the sideline, he's yanked that one across the face of the posts. But 16 for 10 minutes to go. Yeah, looking at that scoreboard, now close is you wouldn't rule out them setting up for a one point. Good ball from Nyla Valls, wasn't it? Quality. And Wakefield up. They know Lee Kershaw. Well, they know what that try, conceding that try might mean to them. You cannot fault this second half effort from Wakefield. Not Surely. It. That's it, Bill. The season's not gone. Do you know, like everyone was calling this this game the four point ball game, and whoever won it obviously gets further away from the bottom of the table. But if they can put in performances like this consistently, there's going to be a win round the corner. They've just got to stay calm, be composed, turn up, listen to what the coach says, do the right things on the field. And a wind's round the corner. But this was be this would be viewed as one of the best opportunities. Up against the side just above you in the table, who haven't really been setting the world on fire either. Yeah. Only one win to their name. Yeah, well, it's a derby game. Anything can happen in a derby game. We'll see that over the weekend as Joe Westerman comes back onto the field. Whether you're above your near neighbour or behind them, it doesn't really matter. It's whoever turns up on the day, plays the best rugby, normally gets the points. 
news that uh, Jordan Crowther has left the field for Wakefield for uh, head injury assessment. Joe Westerman, in the middle of your picture there, is back on the field after his sin binning. Now then, is there some fire in Wakefield's bellies in the last 10 minutes here? Can they rattle the Castleford Tigers cage? Here is Mason Lino. Lino tries again over the top. No, he doesn't. He sells the dummy. Then the ball is lost. It's batted back. And Castleford Tigers will take possession virtually on their own try line. And it was Beretta Faraima who got there. Good job he did, because that ball was loose. Yeah, was it Nyla Valls who comes up with a decent shot on Mason Lino, doesn't he? They're both struggling for the ball. The ball then comes loose. Well, that's the danger of Lino. It's the Castleford Tigers supporters who uh, are celebrating. The drums beating to our left. Wakefield supporters over to our right. Quiet. Just absorbing the situation. Another defeat on the cards. As Miller puts a deep, deep kick downfield into the arms of Senior. Big seven and a half minutes now for Castleford, Jacob Miller. Here he is, look at that line speed from him, trying to get all the Kershaw. Kershaw, a strong returner of the ball, and gets the, the pass to a senior. Wakefield have to go back to August the 29th, 2022 for that last Super League win, that was that victory at Saints. It's a long wait between victory songs for this Wakefield Trinity side. And it's going to continue by the look of things. Mason Lynn has picked up a knock. It's Morgan Smith. Here's Jay Pitts now. Pitts, Mason Lino, Lino, Samisoni Lange. For Rimo makes the tackle. It went forward, says the referee. And again, Castleford players celebrate and they salute the effort of Beretta for Rimo. Well, how many times have we seen that in this game? The edge defender, very aggressive, like you said, Rick, works really, really hard. Both sides of the ball comes in. Slams Lange to the ground, loses the ball. And that's a big part of his game for Imo. Been physical, been demanding. And Lange felt the full weight of that tackle from for Imo. Ten seconds. It's on me, let's get in. Fifth game in charge for the Casper Tigers coach, or interim coach, Andy Last. And on course for his second win this evening. Castleford's second win of the season, which will cast Wakefield more adrift at the bottom of the table. And Wakefield with uh, a tricky road ahead. They've got Lee Leopards at home next, and uh, Lee demonstrating they are not going to be pushovers this season. Then they're away to Wigan, and I think next up after that, it's Warrington. That's a massive three games for them, isn't it? Huge, huge three games for them. Like on the back of playing this game, emotionally, are they going to be drained? Castleford with Salford away next. Hull KR are the visitors after that, and then they travel to Lee. Here is Jacob Miller. That's the fifth tackle. And a little grubber kick sits up nicely for Kershaw, but nowhere for him to go. Big defensive players there again. It's Jacob Miller flying out the line up against his former side. Release to go. Riesling playing the ball. And they're going to have to do something from deep here now. Here's Samisoni Lange. Lange, but that combination there again for Rimo and Mahe Fanua. Well, he just hits hard and clamps hold of the ball. And Lange does not a chance he's going to get the offload away. Yeah, Mahe Fanua hasn't scored a try in the last 14 games for, for Castleford, but he's made some tackles and stopped some, probably. It's more good defensive work. Uh, Jordan Turner and Paul McShane and Hewitt. On the last, Pitts, Mason Lino, 
Lino running it. Here's Ashurst. Ashurst to Samisoni Lange. Lange manages to keep it alive. They're doing well here as Liam Hood spins, gets it to Lino. Lino, short ball, Whitbread rides the challenge, rides the challenge and loses the ball at the last. And it's a penalty for the high shot. Yes, it is. Good, strong carries. An off the cuff play from Wakefield. And like you said, they've got nothing to lose, yeah, Bill. Scoreboards it's against them, clocks wait. against them. Liam. I'll tell you what, referee Marcus Griffiths has had a very calm game in the middle of, of, of this uh, stormy rivalry. Move, Lewis. It's always been Nine. under control, probably tempting fate here, but... Well, you all say a ref's had a good game when you've not really mentioned him. And I agree I with just, you. Just have. <laughs> Here's Renew for Tony. Six again, slow. Wakefield, can they strike in the closing minutes here? Is there still a chance for them? Here is Dagger. One. Move now. Head strapped one. after that knock. Here is Samisoni Lange, but a good thumping challenge on him. Here's Mason Lino. Lino, a little skip. What? Jay Whitbread, he's driving the ball in. Hey. Kenny Edwards is driving Louis him back. Hood. Here is Mason Lino again. Dagger, Ashurst, Ashurst short ball to Samisoni Lange, but good defence from Fanua and Farimo. So here's Dagger, here is Mason Lino. The Castleford holding their shape as he goes across the field and almost finds a way through. Westerman clinging onto his collar to deny him the opportunity. Four tackles gone into the last couple of minutes now. Pitts. On it comes to Dagger, and the ball is batted down by Mahe Fanua. Wayfield will get the ball back. An outstanding defence from Castleford, preventing Wakefield. In desperation from getting over the line. Mahe Fanua will be happy to concede that. Just doesn't want the ball to go out wide. He's done a decent job over on the right hand side. Mahe Fanua and Beretta Faraimo. Very physical. Because you know that Mason Lino normally gets hold of the ball, he's attacking that side all the time, so they've been very busy in the game. So, closing minutes of this contest. Is there a last defiant response from this Wakefield side? Not if Casford Tigers have got anything to do with it, at least Wakefield have got on the scoreboard this evening. But just the one try for them, that one try in this second half for them, scored by Samisoni Lange. Here's a Tony. Moves to me! Go to. Hood. Short ball finds Whitbread, and Whitbread is wrapped up. Held, Held up, and good Release defensive it. end to this game from Ten the Council of the Tigers to keep their line secure, the line. to deny Aye. Wakefield a glimmer of a hope of getting back into this game. Coming up to the last 60 seconds, Pitts. Here is Mason Lino. Lino has tried everything he knows, and he's tried the ball over the top. Oh! The ball over the top. And what about that from Jacob Miller? Just as it looked as though Kershaw was going to score. Miller comes in and denies him with a thumping tackle. And they're good signs. The game's finished, even if Kershaw gets this try. Like, they still win the game. That's pride in your, your line. Jacob Miller hits him with everything, prevents him from getting the ball down. And look at the way they celebrate again. You love seeing players celebrate defensive efforts, defensive wins. Sometimes the players look at games and think, right, it's all about attack, or fans look at games and think, it's all about attack. No, defensive players like that are just as good. Worth six points for Cass. But good signs for Wakefield as well in this game. Haven't been blown up. They've lost again. But for 80 minutes, they've performed. They've not performed week in, week out like they did against Salt. Unless the last game was like against Salford. Two games now they've performed for the full 80. But they're four points adrift. Yeah. They're four points adrift at the bottom of the table. In this rivals round, the first game of seven. We're showing you on Sky Sports. The honours have gone to the Castleford Tigers, the home team up against Wakefield Trinity. Bottom of the table, a side desperate to get off the mark, but their losing run goes on.
Gazavid Tigers pick up their second victory of the season. And at times they've had to dig deep with a big defensive effort, especially in this second half when Wakefield were looking to get back in the game. And Gazavid Tigers held firm despite that Samisoni Lange try, which gave Wakefield a glimmer of hope. But it's Gazavid who take the points and Wakefield who have to take another blow. 16-4 the final score.